I'm not sure how much of it is uh, like about file systems. Um, what it is is uh, more about clouds. So I've been talking about clouds for the last couple of years, and some of you have been uh, unfortunate to hear me speak before. So, but today you're lucky because I only have about 20 minutes, which I'm now starting. And uh, uh, I'll just give a brief overview of a very specific uh, part of cloud computing, which is uh, which is what we see. Uh, what it is. So cloud is stuff. It's the main, uh, the main uh, thing to recognize when when you're starting to work well with computers today, because everything is is now moving. Well, everything is now either moving to the cloud or becoming the cloud. You don't work with uh, single machines anymore. And uh, cloud is not not a cluster. We have a lot of tools to work with clusters uh, in our arsenal, but. Cloud is uh, different from uh, from a cluster in that it's not a tightly controlled system. It can be a very extremely diverse. Uh, uh, it can be spanning multiple infrastructures that you don't control or have different types of control over. And uh, its general purpose, as opposed to a cluster that's uh, for example, HPC cluster, which is just high performance computing, you can expect what people will be doing there. You know uh, what type of people will be using it. Clouds are more like when they're built, you have one use for them, when, and like several months down the road, you have a zillion other tasks for that. That goes for any big, big company. So today, uh, uh, systems engineers, Really, whatever they do, they have to basically live uh, on a lot of machines. And uh, that doesn't mean that you can't automate access and control of, of those machines, but until they really become so self-aware and sentient that they can heal themselves, you'll have to go log in uh, to one or more of them. And uh, uh, you also have laptops with different kind of Unix systems, either it's FreeBSD, OSX, or Linux. And you have, uh, apart from your day job or your main project, you have other projects. Or, for example, well, I work for a company that does a, uh, that, you know, uh, has a cloud, a private cloud. But I also have access to the FreeBSD cluster. And uh, uh, the main question that uh, uh, that an admin uh, systems engineer has when he accesses dozens or hundreds of uh, of machines. Uh, uh, quite often is can I keep my personal configuration files uh, propagated to every machine and synchronized in a way uh, so uh, the, there was a move of movement in the, in the 90s to move all configuration including personal files to under, uh, to under version control uh, and uh, come uh, come our day and age, you uh, see working groups uh, researching how to do it right. So there's uh, there's a whole working group trying out different types of version control, different version control systems. Uh, they all do some some kind of sorcery and magic with symlinking, copying, automated committing, and stuff. Uh, so when I, uh, several years ago, when I had to uh, really bite the bullet and move my home directory uh, to uh, under version control, uh, I, I researched uh, their solutions and I didn't like because didn't like any of them because they introduced uh, uh, another level of complexity. So what I did is is this: I I just started a Git repository in my home directory. Obviously, I had to turn off the. Uh, the, the function that shows all intact files when you when you show the status when you try to get the status, 
uh, and I keep only on each machine, uh, on, on all machines, I keep only uh, what I need distributed uh, to uh, everywhere. So that's uh, the dot files uh, mostly, and uh, for example, I keep my talks version controlled uh, uh, in my home directory. But that's like a small subset. So if if I have some big files, I usually uh, usually we don't need to to version them. There are there are actually ways to keep big files and next to version control, uh, keeping hashes of them, but that's too complicated for me. So the main difficulty when you uh, put your home directory in Git uh, and have it basically the same across all operating systems, uh, all versions of, uh, of them, all kinds of envir environments, the difficulty is uh, all the environments are slightly different. So some of them might have uh, ZSH, some, has, some might uh, have like just Bash. Um, I also use uh, Tmux uh, or Screen when either is available for, uh, uh, well, at start of my login session. So the, the, the basically, basically the simple solution is to just uh, have, uh, have your profile uh, script for have your profile settings, which are actually sourced and evaluated by shell. Check if you have, uh, check the system for different parameters. So it's, it boils down to, if, you, if I have Tmox here, I will launch it. If I don't, I will try screen, ZSH, and so on. So yeah, there's no there's no symlinks, no uh, no magic. When I need to commit something to, uh, to push something, I do it manually, uh, and uh, I quite enjoy the lack of complexity. Hello, okay, the lack of complexity that uh, that results from this approach. For everything, I use just one branch and one repo. Uh, no different kinds of, you know, templates or something. It's just extremely simple. Uh, so ever since I did it, I really felt like happiness has come to my uh, uh, to my life in Unix shells all across the uh, all across the board. Wherever, uh, whenever I use Unix, I just check out my uh, home directory, and that's it. But most of us uh, are also root uh, on many systems that we deal with. So. When we root, it's, it, it's not just a privilege, it's a responsibility to maintain configuration files. If we're speaking about a cloud, it might be dozens or hundreds of boxes. And uh, then uh, it's not just configuration files, not just rc.conf, it's also user accounts, uh, authentication, security, and all that stuff. So traditionally, uh, many people tried uh, placing configuration files under version control uh, in different ways, but for uh, most recently, uh, different operating systems like Windows and OS X, they tried to leverage the old technologies uh, of LDAP, Kerberos, to, to do that. The problem with that, the failure in that is uh, it's not cross-platform. Uh, and uh, it's quite heavyweight. So if you want to do to use uh, LDAP in a in a sane way, you have to have some directory uh, server to manage all these settings and import and export them correctly. Kerberos is usable in the modified versions that uh, Microsoft Windows and OS X have. But if you try it, um, if you try it on your own, the vanilla uh, either Ham Hamdal or MIT Kerberos. It, it has a lot of problems. It's extremely, uh, as well as LDAP, it's extremely difficult to debug. Uh, so the question is, if not LDAP and Kerberos, can we have the same uh, rc.conf and uh, password file and everything else that uh, deals with systems configuration everywhere? And the answer is quite the same, but the devil is in the details, uh, obviously. 
So what we did uh, some time ago, we started experimenting with uh, moving everything to a single configuration that's not like a hundred branches, a branch per machine, or hundred repos with a repo per, per machine or, or, or a role. It's just one set, one single set of configuration files that's usable and applicable throughout our complete uh, infrastructure. Any role, any computer, any machine type, uh, independently of where it's situated, if it's our data center or a rented box. And when we, the, 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 there's obviously a lot of details to, do, to it, but uh, uh, when you do that, it, uh, it, what it obviously does, it uh, firstly, uh, you start seeing these configuration files as a unified registry, uh, configuration registry of your whole infrastructure. And then you, uh, you just see it move to your file system. So you don't need an LDAP or uh, another crazy kind of uh, uh, registry. File system is the best uh, database, the most versatile, uh, depending on the type of file system and can be, it can compete in speed. Uh, so it's, in, more, in many respects, it's the, the file system is the best uh, structured, uh, well, semi-structured database base. Um, and uh, when you start using DVCS, uh, Git in this case, or any other, you kind of discover that DVCS is also the best way to, to do master-master replication. Because when you use like master-master in LDAP, it's really tricky to uh, to get it right, and then it has a lot of limitations. It has a lot of quirks. It has uh, very complicated recovery scenarios. You have to keep it all in your mind. But when you use Git, it's all it, it all goes manual. But then you know what you're doing. You have no surprises. Well, Git is of course not an ideal solution, but. Uh, it's really, it really becomes a very straightforward and simple process to, to make sure that everything's in sync and uh, when there are conflicts of any type, you know how to resolve them because Git has a very powerful toolkit to do just that. So it's a, it's a very, uh, Git is a very powerful master-master replication tool, but you don't need to, you, you really need to avoid automating it too much or the whole benefit is, uh, uh, is threatened. So what about roles? We have hundreds of machines, dozens of roles, uh, web servers, database servers, uh, all of that. So I, I thought about uh, making a separate registry for hosts and their roles, a separate kind of map, but then uh, we, we just settled, uh, we, we just found out that it's really, it's really easy to use existing tools for that. So we started using uh, the password files to create host accounts in, in them and uh, the group file to uh, manage uh, roles and assign roles to different machines. Uh, the only uh, the only thing that we, we missed was when uh, if we, if you have a single set of configuration files across all your machines, then how does the machine know that it's that it's that machine and there are th those roles attached to it when it boots up? Because normally you have different different rc.conf settings on different machines, different IP addresses, different host names, but now it's all the same. You, you can't have any differences. So what we did is a very, an extremely simple aware map that just have two uh, fields, two columns. That's host name and MAC address. So we chose to, to use MAC address, uh, one or more of them, to identify machines. Uh, because that's uh, like, the, it's, it's not completely persistent, but it's mostly, in, in most cases, it's persistent across any changes. Uh, most uh, network controllers are, now, are nowadays built in. Uh, and it's pretty straightforward, so you can use if config to query it. So when, it, in a box, when a box boots up, it learns about its hostname, then it gets its IP address from DHCP or 
uh, or, or static configuration which is mapped to uh, uh, to to its role or host name. So uh, the way we uh, we structure rc.conf is. Uh, we, we use the fact that uh, it's a shell script. Uh, so it's currently not extremely beautiful, but it is simple. We have the most, for the most part, it's just common, a common section, like NTPD enable on every box. But then if we need to have some specifics uh, for different kind of, kinds of roles, we use this kind of syntax. So you just define, uh, you basically define a function named uh, role dot uh, role name and you you place uh, whatever parameters you need specifically uh, on the boxes with the role in there and if you have to have uh, a specific parameter on just a single box you have the fact that each box has a, a, a role um, attached to, uh, well, assigned to it with the uh, with this uh, with the name uh, identical with uh, the host name. So every every host has a group uh, of its own where it's present in. So if you need if you need a, a setting like a hack enabled on just a single box, you just uh, use its host name. Um, so role aware configs have been really helpful uh, for us. It's are they role aware? Uh, like sudo, uh, it's uh, it can have um, you can spec actually specify what uh, privileges uh, which users get on specific boxes, uh, which are rules in our case. But also Nginx is kind of role compatible because you can define all your hosts across the whole infrastructure in one web server configuration file and then when it runs on all these boxes, only the parts that are relevant to that box will be used. Uh, for other type of configuration files, uh, we have to use some uh, some workarounds. So, for example, uh, for syslog, we have two configuration versions. One is for most boxes, which just send configuration files uh, to log collectors, and one log, log collector uh, configuration file. And we we specify in rc.conf that for this role, you have to have these arguments to uh, to syslog, which specify which uh, which version of the config file to use. But it's mostly we limit it to as few uh, different configuration file files as possible. So I also mentioned SQL in the uh, name of the talk. Uh, so it's it's all great if you uh, it, it's it might you might find it hard to believe that it's really that simple, but we do have our root and home directories in Git, and it works marvelously uh, across over a hundred of boxes currently, uh, Hertzner, private boxes, it all works seamlessly. But what about SQL? Because we uh, obviously like many companies have MySQL or Postgres, and they need to version some uh, uh, some part of the schema or the whole schema. So we, we just use it. We just use Git for functions and views because uh, they have this fact that when you dump a function or a view in Postgres, uh, it creates a, a piece of script which says create or replace. So you can infinitely replay the uh, uh, the dump. And uh, it will uh, it will not well it would do as expected if the function is or review is already there then it's all right if it's not there it will just create it so uh, it, it's extremely convenient just to uh, we have a very simple script to dump all views and functions to separate files and commit them. And when you do that, you can actually uh, edit your views and functions uh, anywhere you like. Either you go into into a database and edit the, uh, edit them there, and then dump and sync, or you uh, edit them in your file system with any uh, any editor that you you have, and you just execute the files, the SQL files and the database is now synced to whatever you edited. Uh, 
so the problem is it just works nicely for functions and views. There are ways to, to do it for the rest of the schema. Uh, so there is a tool, a very popular tool, which, names, which is named Posius. Uh, it's uh, written in Python and it can really do uh, complete schema versioning. But uh, it's kind of complicated, so we don't have it in our core uh, infrastructure. It's, it's been used, but not, not in the core DVCS stuff. And what we'd like to see is for databases, uh, well, and for that matter, Unix, to get out of 70s and 60s, because the interfaces uh, in there are mostly so archaic that you really have to uh, strain your fingertips to, uh, to use them. Uh, so in the, the caveats is just a couple of them. Git is beautiful until you marry it, because when you learn its guts, it's uh, it's so ugly. I, for years, I thought it's the only uh, sane thing that came out of Linux, but uh, now I see that it's, it's not it's not completely true. So it's not that that cool. It really opened our eyes to DVCS in a new way, the fast, uh, versatile uh, DVCS. But it needs to be reinvented by a real programmer really soon, I think. So the sooner it happens, the, the better. And Mercurial, I, I don't think it's a, a, a really viable alternative because, yeah, it's, it's written in a scripted language. And uh, it also has different kinds of quirks because it was developed alongside Git, and now we, we have so much new data uh, that uh, that we can use as a starting point for uh, for a new DVCS. Uh, so yeah, another thing is obviously Git doesn't handle permissions and uh, and owners. There are there are hacks that go in Git for that, but we just use a posture code for the root file system. Uh, and we really need more people to, to start using Unix in a cloud way and recognize the need for cloud-ready cloud rollaway configuration files. Uh, so, so that's about it. Um,